Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at um, uh, expected uh, engagement distances uh, for a militia. Okay, and uh, the situation is that uh, it's the mid 1980s, um, and uh, the Soviets and the Cubans have invaded the United States. They're occupying half of it, and we have uh, you know pe you know people caught behind enemy lines. They're forming militias to fight the communists. Okay. And, of course, I'm talking about the movie Red Dawn. I've done a couple of videos on this alternate reality. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about um, expected engagement distances. What distances do we expect to be uh, actually fighting the, uh, the, you know, the Soviets at? Uh, and this is going to be very important you know, in choosing what type of equipment we're going to be taking out. Okay? So what I did is um, I collected some data over here. Um, um, the two sources are the... Uh, the first source is the American Operational Research Organization. Uh, they collected some data from the Korean War. And the other one is the British AORG. They collected some information from World War II. Um, and, uh, and this is specifically engagements uh, you know, between soldiers with rifles. So we're not talking about artillery or anything like that. So uh, what they found okay, was that 90% of engagements happened at less than 300 yards. 80% of engagements happened at less than 200 yards, 50% of engagements happened at less than 100 yards, and 25% of engagements uh, were close quarter combat. Okay, so um, this is some really interesting information for us. Uh, we can see here that 90% of the engagements are going to be at less than 300 yards, which tells us that you know AR-15s, AK-47s, uh, would be suitable for for ninety percent of these engagements. Um, now, being that this is the mid nineteen um, eighties, uh, um, and uh, we don't, you know, at that point in time, um, you know, AK forty sevens and AR fifteens were not so commonly owned um, in the United States. Okay, uh, you know, they they really didn't become that popular until the uh, Democrats tried to ban them, and by banning them, they made them the most popular guns in America. Uh, but it, it's the 1980s, and they're not that popular yet. Um, you know, the most uh, common rifles will probably be like your typical uh, hunting rifles. Okay, so um, initially, um, this you know the combat against the uh, against the Soviets uh, is probably going to be with those hunting rifles, and then within a couple of months, um, you know, we'll be able to uh, pick up maybe some AK-47s. Uh, off of the Soviets. Okay, so we're going to use battlefield pickups uh, to equip ourselves. Um, but this data does give us some interesting information. Uh, we can expect that 10% of uh, of the engagements will be at more than um, more than the 300 yards. Okay, so you know most likely we'll be somewhere in the 400 to 500 yard range, and I suspect that um, it will be uh, in you know at the point where we are trying to get out okay so so we're gonna have one man in the team right uh, with a rifle that has a magnification scope because in the uh, previous videos um, when I was talking about the uh, ambush tactics um, for example I, I talked about the L ambush and the B ambush you know I talked about a seven man team that set up an ambush in an L pattern okay and the, the you know basically the you know basically they would ambush the uh, Soviets uh, and the benefit of this uh, L pattern is that, you know, you have these guys shooting forward, okay, this guy's shooting diagonally, these guys are shooting forward, so there's no risk that they're going to accidentally shoot each other uh, because they're all shooting forward, and at the same time, um, they're able to provide crossfire because you've got these guys shooting this way, these guys shooting this way, so, so you're going to have overlapping fire. Um, so, so it will be difficult for the Soviets to take cover, okay? So, so this is a really sound military tactic uh, that's going to be very useful for our militia fighters. So uh, in, this, um, you know, in this plan that I set up, uh, this person over here, okay, I said in the video, in the previous video, is going to be the designated marksman. I, I call them the sniper just because it's easier. Um, and he is going to have a rifle that has... Uh, magnification scope. Uh, most of these people on the line are going to be at uh, about 50 yards. Okay, so that's this line over here. And this guy's going to be a little further back. He's going to be at 75 yards to 100 yards, uh, and that's going to naturally happen because of this the L. Okay, basically there's there's just more distance over here uh, because of his position further back. 
um, which is going to be really important because he's also he's going to provide the cover fire. Um, you know, after these people shoot that 30 round magazine, um, they're going to get out. Okay, remember in that video I said that we're limiting this attack to two minutes or one 30 round magazine. Uh, you know, this has to be a fast attack. It has to be really fast and furious. We're going to dump that 30 round magazine. You know, provide overwhelming fire. You know, get you know, do all the damage that we can. Get them to take cover. Uh, and then we're going to get out of there. As soon as they finish that 30 round magazine, they're all going to pull back to the fallback position that they've already pre-planned. Uh, the sniper is going to stay in place just a little bit longer uh, to provide some cover fire. These guys are going to pull back to uh, their fallback position. Uh, and basically the sniper is then going to pull, you know, is going to come out and back. This way he gets out of the way of this fire, pulls back. As soon as the sniper comes back, then they all get out of there, um, you know, and they move back to the to the next fallback position. Okay, so uh, that's why we need one person um, in this team with a rifle that has a magnification scope, um, because he's going to be doing that that the ten percent that's over three hundred yards. Okay, but everybody else is going to have AK forty sevens because they're going to be basically um, pretty much here, and some of them are going to be here. But mostly over here, that's where most of the, uh, the work is going to be done uh, in that, um, you know, in, in the less than uh, uh, 100 yards range. Uh, realistically, it's, in this case, it'll probably be, you know, within 50 yards. Um, so, so, so that's, that's the plan. Um, as far as how many magazines they should carry, well, they're going to use 130 round magazine um, during the attack. Uh, we want them to have at least three more for getting, getting out and getting back home. You know, why not have 10? Well, because magazines get heavy. Um, the most important thing that these guys are going to be carrying, and this is something that one of my followers pointed out in, uh, in, uh, you know, in another video, the most important thing that they, they're going to have on them is water, okay? Uh, because whether it's summer or winter, um, they're going to get really thirsty running through the woods, um, you know, getting to those fallback positions and then trying to make their way out. So not only are they going to need water on them, um, they're probably going to need to stage water, um, you know, at their fallback positions because water gets really heavy, you know. Um, and it's also, you know, if, if you have like a, like, you know, if you have a lot of water on you, I mean, if it's a small canteen, it really doesn't throw you off balance that much. But if you're trying to carry like a gallon of it, it, it can really throw you off balance. So they're going to, you know, basically have the equivalent of a canteen or a water bottle on them. Um, and then at their fallback positions, um, they're going to want to hide uh, some water there. Okay, so that's going to be an important part of the escape plan. They need to be able to water themselves. Um, so there are my thoughts on this. This is the historical data, and I think it would be you know very useful for us to keep this in mind, um, you know, for for our you know militia plans for this uh, Red Dawn, um, you know, alternate reality that we're talking about. Uh, and again, uh, you know, these are this is historical data out of World War II in Korea. 90% uh, of the engagements under 300 yards, 80% under 200, 50% under 100, and 25% are going to be CQB. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it. Um, you know, if you're not a member of my channel, subscribe, hit that bell button so you get notifications of my new video, my yeah, the new videos that I post. I'll talk to you guys soon.